for iron. Um, I have my mat, my rotary cutting mat, though. I'm going to use scissors so you don't really need a mat. I just always keep one down. Oh, hi, Christine. Hi, Jane. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to be here too, Jane. So this is kind of a this is I call this kind of a fancy. This is kind of a fancy shopping bag. Um, I like this one because you double over the fabric. So if you're holding it, it's um, you know it's not cutting into your hands. And let's see if I can open it because it has has pleats on the sides. So. You see, there's, there's, there's plenty of room in there. So see how much it pleats in on the sides? So you can really, really fill it up. And it's got, for lack of a better word, it's got a strong bottom. And let's see. Let's see if I can do a good job. So when you whenever you fold anything that goes into a pocket, you've got to fold up to the pocket. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit in the pocket. So let's see if I can do that. I didn't want to wrinkle it all up. But... Let's see. I think one more. And then you bring the pocket around. It's hard to, it's hard to do this and try to keep it in the, in the camera. I look like I'm making a big mess. And you get you do a better job than I'm than I'm doing. Here we go. So then you can just uh, you can put a few of them in inside of one bag if you want if you wanted to, or keep one in your purse, or a couple in the car. I'd have to put one in my bag because I always I always forget to bring bags in. So there it is. And the best thing is. Is that it's washable so when you come home you can just if you want to you can just throw it oh it didn't get too wrinkled you can just throw it in the I was gonna say throw it in the freezer throw it in the uh, in the laundry okay so I think we'll, I'll just give it one more minute uh, Christine says she's ready to sew hey Rhonda is Sewing Nancy with you today, Rhonda? Oh, I guess I'm backwards to you. Here, let me do this way. How's that? That's better than turning your head looking upside down, isn't it? So a sewing machine is set up for regular sewing with regular sewing thread. I'm using a Microtex 7010 needle. Um, like I said, two one-half yard pieces or it could be one yard and you just cut it for, for two but I always say hey let's let's pretty it up a little this is some uh, Alice in Wonderland fabric my oldest daughter likes Alice in Wonderland and uh, so I'll give this to her don't tell her maybe I'll give it to her for Christmas because she'll probably use it like as a regular bag. Oh, hi, sewing Nancy. Everybody set up to go? All right, so let me set this aside. And let's get the pressing mat out of the way for now. Okay, what did I do with my fabric? Here they are. So this one is uh, Mary Poppins. I didn't have a, a, a second one to do a lining, so I just picked something I had. And the, what I, what I want to make sure of before I start is, because when I did my other one, for some reason I cut them, I didn't cut them the same size. 
And that generally means for me, I always cut things a little bigger and then I trim it down just to make sure it's straight. But we're good there. We get my instructions back so I know where I am. Okay, so my two pieces of fabric are good. So I'm going to fold. I'm going to take one at a time. And I kind of have to work this way. You don't mind being on my on the side here. And what I want to do is I want to, I made sure that I pressed out that fold. So I want to make sure that I have the bottoms lined up. So I'm going to line it up at the bottom and on the left and right, all the raw edges together. And then just get it, get it straight. And I've got my fold up here. And I'll turn it in a minute because I probably can cut from that direction. Okay. So I have my wrong sides together. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take my, that's, this is my lining fabric. And I'm going to take my outside fabric. I'm going to do the same thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my lining and my outside fabric so that they line up at the bottom and on both sides. And I know I'm, I'm moving the fabric around a lot, but hopefully you're doing yours at the same time. And what I want to make sure of, let me do it this way, sorry. What I want, and I, my direction fabric is going the wrong way. So if I had wanted to use this for a bag, I would have had to cut 42 inches, which is more than the yard. But I thought, well, since it's just a bag, I'm okay with that. Not my prom dress. So I'm lining up my top folds. And I'm just going to, I'm going to put a pin here just for a minute. Because you probably have more room. Hopefully you have more room than I do. So my bottom is a, is a little off, and I'm okay with that because we'll trim the bottom later. But I want to make sure that my sides are the same. So let me just fix this one. But I don't want to keep pulling from the top, so that's why I want to make sure those folds, where they both, where they both fold up here, I want to make sure those folds line up. That's the most important part. Okay. Oh, stab myself. So I can see I'm a little off on the, on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Maybe. So I'm going to come all the way over. Through the end, I'm gonna I'm going as far right as I can, knowing that all the fabrics are to, un, un, are even. And what I want to do is make sure that my line across here is is in line with my fold.
And you notice I didn't take my hand off my ruler yet until I know I it must be getting weak here. Until I know I've got it cut. Then I'm gonna just turn it around and do the other side. And again now my folds up here. So I'm lining my ruler up with the fold. And I'm just, I'm really just taking off a sliver. Okay, so now at least I'm start I'm starting out straight and I may have to straighten out again as I go along. So you have your two fabrics, your lining fabric, they're both pinned together. Okay? And I'm gonna put a pin oh, about here. Just so I keep everything nice and uh, nice and straight. Because I'm working with folded fabric twice, you know, so that's that's four layers of fabric. So now I need my marking pen and my ruler. And I'm going to turn this way so you can see. So what I want to do is I want to be five inches in from each side. And then I want to be six and a half, I'm, yeah, five inches in, six and a half down. So I can take my ruler, and what I'm going to do is I'm first going to five, find five inches, and I want to make sure that I line the ruler up at the top so it's straight. Okay, so I've got my five inches, one, two, three, four, five, five across the top. Now I'm going to move my ruler up so that I have six and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. I don't want to lose sight that I have five over here. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five to my edge. And one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And again, I'm making sure that my top is my uh, folded part is lined up. And I'm going to draw a line down. And I'm using the friction pen, that's all right. Now I'm going to do the same thing. And so, can you see my line right there? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. I'm lined up across the top. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Okay, so before I, oh, I got a pin under there, it's making it rocky. So I'm going to just move the pin for now because I'm not going to be moving the fabric around at this minute. One, two, three, four, five, lined up across the top. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. One, two, three, four, five. Now, you might be saying to me, well, why don't you just count the numbers on the ruler? I rarely ever do that. I always count the, the boxes. I find that sometimes, you know, you might have your ruler over one further than you think you do. So I just count. And I'm going to draw another line. Okay, so now I have a line here and here. Now I want to connect the lines, but I want to make sure. So my ruler is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can't use it this way. I got to go this way because I want to go down six and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And I'm just going to draw a line across. And then I'm just going to connect and I want to make sure I'm, I stay straight. So I should, if I go, if I do it this way, I can't tell if I'm straight or not. But if I do it this on this side, 
and I can line up pretty much with the lines that I drew. They might not be exactly on one of these solid lines, but at least they'll be straight. And that's what counts. And if I didn't connect the other way, so now, can you see I have a, can you see the square? Comes around this way, this way. Now, I want to curve these little edges. So I'm going to come up about a half an inch, half an inch, and I'm going to make a mark, and here half an inch. So on each corner, let me make it so you can see it. Let me do them both and then I'll I'll show you. I used for some reason I decided to use a pen that's the same color as some of the parts of the fabric, so and I'm right on that. I'm right on that same color. There we go. So let me show you how I marked it. So here's one mark, half inch from this edge, and there's the other mark. And what I'm going to do is, and I'll, and I'll draw it first, but I'm, I'm making a little bit of a curve, connecting those two marks. See it right there? Just a little curve. And hopefully you won't be picking your fabric up and flopping it around like I'm doing. Okay, so I made a curve on each side. I'm going to put that pin back in that I had over here. And now I'm going to cut everything. And I'm just going to use my regular scissors. Took me a minute to remember where they were. You could rotary cut down and then curve, but I find it just as easy to use the scissors. So scissor lesson. You're cutting in here, not up here. You're not going to go, because you look like the, you used your weed whacker. So you're going to cut your fabric back here. And then when I get near that curve, I'm just going to curve around and stop. Then I'm going to go to the other side. And then I'm going to curve, curve around. I'm just going to make sure I don't have my fabric underneath there. And stop. And I stopped at the line, the, the line going this way. And now I can just pick that up and go straight. Just get some things out of the way here. And we're going to use this for our pocket. So here's our here's our bag. Folds are up here. Okay. And we can go ahead and take the pins out. But we're going to work on our pocket first. My pins are the same, almost the same color as part of the fabric. I have to feel around. Okay, so we're just going to set that aside for a second and work on our pocket. So I'm just going to move mine over because I have nowhere else to put it. Okay, so our pocket. So we have two pieces of fabric. So our pocket is going to be, um, let me double check, I think it's six by six and a half by six and a half. And I don't think I have enough this way. If you have enough this way, then uh, that makes it all, all the easier. But I don't think we do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only because we curve the edge, so we can't get all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just going to open this up. And I'm going to put them right sides together.
and I'm just and they don't have to line up even because we're going to cut across there anyway. And I'm just going to put a a pin right there to hold it together. And what I'm going to do is pardon my pardon my reach. I'm going to go down to where the curve is. And I'm going to cut that off. Boy, I'm really angling on Yana. Sorry. So I'm lining up roughly with the with the edge of my fabric. And I'm just going to cut that curve section off. So it gives me now I have a nice I have a nice straight line. Okay. I'm going to move this pin a little bit. So now I need six and a half. Now you can use your um, mat because I have a six inch ruler. So I have to, and I'm going to have this pin right in my way. So I'm going to take that pin out for a minute. So I have to use my mat because my ruler is not, and I don't want to do it this way. So I have a six inch ruler. So if I put my ruler a half an inch in from the edge of the fabric and I'm in line with my mat. Make sure I'm lined up with my fabric. And we'll trim some of that off. So we got six and a half. So I'm six and a half this way. Now I gotta turn this way. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half. So now's my chance to straighten those edges. So I'm just going to come in a little way. So I'm just cutting off a little bit. And I want to be lined up straight because these should be straight. So Jane, you're a lefty. You know, you'll be on the other side. I remember that. And I'm just going to trim some off so that I'm not interfering with my six and a half yet. I'm still up because it was set like seven and a half. And now... I'm going to line my fabric up here, oops, sorry, here and here, and I'm going to move my ruler over a half, half an inch, because my ruler is six inches, and I'm going to, I'm holding on to the fabric, but I want to push my ruler up so that I got a nice straight line there. I know this is six, and this is my half. I want to make sure that that my rule is lined up with the uh, guides of the mat and across my fabric. And cut that off. Okay? So I have to look at my fabric because it's directional. So I know now that this is the top of my pocket. So I'm going to put a pin on each, on three sides, nothing along the bottom. And we're going to sew a quarter inch all the way around, but not along the bottom. We have to turn this right side out, and this part's going to be down in the seam allowance. Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine. There we go. And I'm just going to start it, I'm going to start at the bottom where the opening is going to stay. I'm going to go up, across, and down. Quarter inch seam. I'm going to make sure I stop. So that when I turn it, I'm still that quarter inch. And if I'm not, I'll turn back and take another stitch. Try to stop early rather than later. Again, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to turn. See, I'm a little early. I'll take one more stitch. 
And you notice when I take my pen out, I'm still hanging on to my fabric as I take my pen out. I don't want to yank my pen out and then move my fabric. And I don't need to worry about whether I um, block the stitch or not because this end is going to be down in the fabric. So back at the work table. And get some of this out of the way. Yep. You can't see me, but I'm looking, I'm looking around for my pressing mat. I'm just going to move this in a second. My pressing mat up. Okay, so we know that every time we sew, we press. So we know we're going to turn this right side out, but we're still we're going to press it first. So we can clip our corners. My iron's warming up. So we can clip our corners, and I'll do mine, and then I'll show you. I have to get is my nose in the picture. I... So I just clip my corner. I didn't clip on the stitches. I'm a couple. I'm a couple stitches away from the stitches. How's that? Okay, I'm going to press. And I'm going to I'm going to turn this right side out. My ends out as best I can. And I'm going to run my pointer right down that seam because that helps get that seam nice and flat. Now if you find that when you lay this out that this is um, like caved in, you know what I mean? So it's so it's doing it's kind of doing like this. So the seam is not at the edge. Try running your tool down again. And you're, you're running your tool down right along your seam. And then we're going to give this a press. And I just want to make sure that my back, my back fabric isn't showing on the front. Okay, now I'm going to grab the front, and of course I have to decide, I don't know if it makes any difference, but depending on your fabric, I have to decide what side my pocket's going to be on. So if you have something here that you don't want, you know, a big flower or something you don't want covered up, but I need to open this up. And hopefully you have more room than I do. I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm just going to put a crease here. So I know where the center is. Well, let me see. if I'll, I'll, I'll do it with the iron so you can see it better. And then I'll, I'll uh, turn sideways. I'll turn sideways for you. Okay. And then while I'm at it, while I've got my, the iron there, I'm just going to take my pocket and crease it in half. Okay, and what I that's so I know where to put my pocket. So you can kind of see the fold there. And then there's the fold here. And I'm just gonna line them up. Now you see how this fold um, sinks in? So if I turn my pocket right sides together. And now this one sinks in, so they can sink in together. Does that make sense? I find it's easier to line them up if they're both, both the creases are, are a, a valley as opposed to a, a mountain. And then we're going to pin this down. And uh, yeah, I got to take my, 
I'm pinning into my mat. Okay. So let me let me do this again. Okay. All my fabrics up there. This is just one layer. Raw edge to raw edge. We can't see in my pocket. Oh, yeah, see? Looks like that. And I'm just going to pin. I only need one pin on each side. And what we're going to do now is where it starts, we're going to go down and back and down because this is where you'll get the most... Um, you know, stress and and go to the end and then come over to this side down, you know, like down five stitches, back five, and then come down again, all the way down. So let's go to the lost lost my mouse here. All right. Couldn't find where my mouse cursor was. There we go. Sorry about that. So I want to make sure that the whole bag is, is out here, out here behind me. And nothing else is under here. And I'm just going to go down. I guess I'll go down the right side first. And I don't get to the very edge. Uh, because sometimes it's hard to start, but I'm going to stitch down, and I'm probably at eighth of an inch from the edge. And I'm going to go down, and rather than go back, I'm just going to spin it around. Because then I can see where my other stitches are. And now this time, I can go right to the edge, or I sometimes just go barely off the edge and then come back and now I can stitch all the way down and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so now I have to pay attention because the edge of my pocket is on the right now, so I'm looking at the left side of my foot to get my distance. So I'm going to go down a little ways. So I probably went, I don't know, five, six, seven stitches. And I'm going to stitch one right off that edge because I was right near that edge. And make sure as you're spinning this fabric around that somebody doesn't, some part of your fabric doesn't get the idea that they can be underneath there. Make sure it's nice and flat. Sometimes if, you, sometimes if your fabric matches too well, it's hard, it's hard to see where you're supposed to be sewing. Okay. So I'm going to give that a little press. Let me grab my little, oh, get back where we are. There we go. So I'm going to give that a little press. I just stuck my little mat under there. Because, you know, if we sew, we press. Okay, and now we're going to open this up again, and let's take the lining, put that down first, right side up, oh, thanks, Jane, you like the ironing tip? Yeah, I always have that issue of getting that fold, so. Okay, so we're, we're going to put right sides together. And I don't obviously have enough room, and if you don't, that's okay, because 
you'll just do what I do. Now I've got my, I got my, uh, somehow I got my, I got my, my uh, front fabric all twisted up. And we're going to line up these edges. And you can use a clip or a pin. I'm, apparently I'm on pins today. So I, I just want to put a pin on each side. It's like having a, an extra set of hands there. The important thing we want to line up is lining up the two fabrics here. So what I always do is where the curved corner is, I get the lining and the top fabric curved corner all nice and lined up. And I put a pin out oh, about an inch or so, a little more than an inch away. And I go to the other corner. Because we cut them at the same time, so they should be good. And my, my top fabric needs to come up just a tad. So I'm going to I'm gonna reach here and I'm holding the, my lining down and I'm just doing the old scratch, scratch the fabric thing. And I want to get this corner done. And the reason I put the pins out like that is because I'm when I sew around these corners, I'm not taking the pins out until I'm past the corner. Because we're moving the fabric around that corner a little more than usual. And then I'll just pin this center regular with my pin sticking out towards the middle. And then I'm just going to, so I can now take those pins out. So if you were a little off down there, it's okay. Because we're going to trim that bottom when the, when the time comes. And I'm just going to fold my fabric up just so I don't have to have all wrinkly fabric. And I'm actually going to go to the other end corner. I'm not worried about what's happening here. Not my worry right now. And you can see, see how I put the, look, see how I have the pin in there? I don't want to guess now that my lining is right. I want to look and make sure. Because you might think it's lined up and it's like a quarter of an inch away. So when you do these, this should line the, center one up, but I want to see that lining fabric is, that is, they're lined up together at the top. Okay. So now I'm going to put a pin, and again, I want to make sure that both fabrics are lined up here, and a pin here and my lining fabric is out a little bit so I just grab my lining fabric and just scoot it back you know if you got one little place that a little bit oh, took my sewing needle out um, one little place where there's a little lining fabric showing that's okay you might have just cut a little crooked and that and that's all right it's no big deal Okay, so I'll give you just a second to get your, I'm going to take a drink, and I'll make sure you're all, uh, you're all lined up with your pen. Okay, so I'm not going to concern myself with this lining up. I only care about the center section.
So what we're going to do, quarter inch seam, we're going to go all the way around. We're not leaving any opening to turn because, hey, look, we got a big opening right here. Just well, we, And that's actually how we're going to turn it. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this project today because of, of the way this turns and then of the next part, how we do the seams because I, I, I find it amusing. So I'm going to start somewhere along here. Never start at a corner. And so all the way around, being careful around the corners and up and around. So when you get to the machine, you're like, oh, what side do I do? Well, your foot needs to run along here. So you're going to start here. Your inclination is going to be to start over here. But the edge of your foot would be out here on the fabric. We want the edge of the foot to the edge of the fabric or, or somewhere close there. So let's go to the sewing machine. Let's see if we can come in a little closer. See, how's that? Is that pretty good? Okay, so I gotta have my pin some pin cushion somewhere nearby. So I've got, oh sorry, I've got fabric in the front, and I've got fabric out the back. So the middle of the bag. See how half the bags after the machine and half the bags in front of the machine, or somewhere thereabouts. And I want a quarter inch or so seam allowance. Whatever, whatever you pick, try to pick the same thing the whole way around. I don't need to lock the start because I generally, I'm going to go around, and I'm going to stitch over my original stitching by about an inch and a half and then lock it. If you find that, you can't probably can't see mine, but my lining fabric keeps poking out. I just have to reach un underneath and kind of coax it back where it belongs. Because he's trying to be uh, trying to be front and center. And I got my front fabric is up on the table and my back fabric is on the table. Hopefully you have room enough to, to do that because you don't want the weight of the fabric pulling while you're sewing. So when we come down to this corner, uh, make sure you have your pivot on if you have pivot on your machine. But as we come to the corner with the curve, we're just going to follow around that curve as best we can. But we're leaving that pin in because as we're moving this around, let me keep my hand out of your way, um, we don't want the fabric to shift. And, and sometimes if you go if you go too slow, it's harder. Then once I'm around the corner enough, I'm on I'm almost on the straightaway. I can get ready to get have it straight again. But I will stop and take that pin out because I I once left the pin in a project, and after I've done the project, I couldn't get the pin out. So. Since then, I've always made sure to keep, keep an eye on my pins. So the pins we inserted regularly, you take out before you get to them as normal. But the ones on the corner, we're going to leave in until the corner is done. I'm standing up to sew, so I'm a little, I'm a little higher than usual. And when you get when you get good enough and you get a moderate pace going, you can get around that corner practically without starting. And then again, I'm taking that corner pin out after I get past the corner, and then I'm resituating my fabric. You know, having it all bunched up just it just makes it more difficult. And then, Rhonda, you'd have to iron more, and I know how much you like ironing. I'm coming down, and again, that lining fabric wants to keep peeking out, so I'm just reaching underneath and kind of doing that same scratch, except I'm scratching from the other direction. And 
and I'm make, making sure as I come around this corner I've got this nice and flat. And you notice I reach over and, and move this fabric around. I'm moving the rest of the fabric. When my arm's in your way, I'm moving the rest of the fabric around. And then once I round the corner, I'm going to stop and take that corner pin out. Look, we only have, what, we have one more corner to go? You're almost there, one corner to go. And again, you notice my hand is flat when I take a pin out. Because if you take a pin out and you're not hanging on the fabric, the whole fabric wants to go with, wants to stay with the pin. They become, they become friends. They want to stay together. Make sure this is nice and flat. If you don't have pivot, lift your foot up as you're going around a couple times. You don't have to lift it all the way up, just a little bit. It just helps the fabric relax. You do enough of this, and trust me, having a having a um, machine with pivot is, is wonderful. So again, I'm stopping, and I'm taking out that corner pin. And now I'm heading up to where I started. So I want to make sure I pay attention because I want to stitch over that as closely as I can. So I went over it by about an inch and a half, and now I'm locking it. You can go three forward, three back, um, and cut my thread. Okay, so we're back back to the drawing board. Oh, uh, were we blurry that whole time? I'm sorry. I apologize for that. That's not the best, is it? Makes you look like you need glasses. I apologize. The way my the way I set up the studio, I can't see the I can't see that screen. I'll be I'll be more careful next time we go over. Let me um, I'm going to adjust it back a little bit again and make it pick somewhere. It was probably because my arm was in and out of there. I apologize. Okay, so we sew. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. That was bizarre. Having a bizarre kind of day. Oh, Rhonda says it's her favorite thing to do, ironing. Yeah, I think she's telling you a fib. I think she's fibbing. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this up because I don't have room down the other end. Because I want an area where I can have this flat. So everybody's nice and flat here. We haven't turned it right side out yet. Because we need to press, and that sets the stitches into the fabric. And, and you should see when you press, you should see it looking um, much neater. Oh, is that making you dizzy when I did that? I'm looking myself dizzy. Okay, now we need a pair of scissors. Small ones, not big ones. And because we have these curves, we need to clip. The reason why you clip a curve is it allows the, we're going to clip the fabric, and I'll show you in a minute. It allows the, the curve is going to, when we turn it right side out, the curve 
fabric and the seam allowance will bunch up because it has nowhere to go. So if we clip it, it can kind of overlap itself and keep it nice and flat. Does that make sense? So let me get a corner and I'll get it clipped. And now, yes, this time I'm going to use the, the end of my scissors. And I'll get in less trouble. So when I clip, the end of my scissor is just before the stitching. And I'm going to start in the straight. I'm going to do it about a little less than a quarter inch, and I'll show you here in a second. Let's see if you can. Oh, there you go. See my little clips? So see how that fabric now is freed up that if it needs to go somewhere, they can cross over each other and stay flat. So I started out on the straight and clipped all the way around to straight again. That way you don't have to wonder, oh, well, where in, where in the curve am I starting? Just start out in the straight. So we're going to do all four corners. And I'm going to turn so I can see, make sure that nothing got blurry without me. Feel, I feel bad you got blurred up. I apologize. I got a little skimp. I got a little skimpy on the seam there. Now that's okay. Not my prom dress. It's just a grocery bag. You see, if you make yourself two of these bags and you go to the store, you only get to buy what will fit in the bag. You can't have any more than that. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you all saying, yeah, right, whatever. Did I get them all? No, nope, I got one more. Oh, no, I did it already. Okay, so we clipped all four corners, right? I'm going to wait just a second in case anybody has a question before I turn it right side out. Because you're like, now I'm sure you're saying, yeah, right side out. How does, how does that work? I'll tell you, this is, if you ever seen a zipper that's in the middle of something, but sort of done on the same, same idea. That made sense, in the middle of something. You know, you know what I mean, in the middle of your fabric. So I'm just going to take the outside fabric and I'm going to just pull it through. And pull it through. And before I get too situated, I just want you to pull it through so that you can say, oh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this now. Because we need to press. And again, Jane, it's, this, it's, this, it's the same thing. I don't want to get that, um, you know, that little, I call it like a, that little crease there. So I'm going to open this up a ways. And I want to press this seam flat, but I don't want to press out here and make a crease. If I do, I can undo it, but I'm, I'll try to avoid that. And in this case, my iron is a little big, so I'm going to come from this end, and I'm just going to, I'm just doing that seam. And then I can take and bring that back fabric down. Knock my I knocked my directions over doing that. That's me trying to my my uh, computer shut off there. Okay, I had to get to where we're gonna be. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just going to open this up a little bit. It doesn't matter if the seam allowance is left or right. It doesn't matter because we're going to be folding this this way. So it doesn't matter which way it is. 
Just pick pick a side, any side. And again, I'm staying away from here because I don't want to put a crease in it. If I can help it. And I'm going to get down to this end. Got, got more lining than I planned on here. And I don't want to have a big um, bunch of fabric un underneath that I that I I increases into. Yeah, that'll keep you way away from there, won't it? And you really should when you lie and just wait a second for it to cool off. But I'm just going to go ahead and grab this lining and bring it back down where it belongs. So while it's, it's still warm, see how nice that is now? Actually, I think while that's nice and that's warm, I'm going to put a pin right here. And then I'm going to come over to this side. Oh, I can get that. I can get that whole piece right out of the way, can't I? There we go. Just try to feel that your seam allowance is all going in the same direction. And I'm getting up by that that little corner of the curve as close as I can. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip this back. Wow, while it's still warm. I'll put a pin right there. Just don't put the pin into your mat. Okay, so while I'm at it, let me go to this side, just in case for some reason i got to iron that again. So my green is showing... My lining is showing, so I'm just pulling it back a little bit. And if you find it worked better for you with um, pinning it as you go around while it's still warm, well, then just go back and warm it up again. And I'm coming to the corner. And I use, uh, I'm using heat resistant pins because I'm going to come in here and press this. And it's always easier to work this if you have the rest of it nice and flat. Be easier to pin if I wasn't on my uh, pressing mat. So I'm going to try to. So I'm going to fold this up because I want to. I want to bring the whole opening to press at one time. So I'm not moving my fabric around while I'm pressing. If if you can. If your corners are lumpy, then you might might have forgotten to clip that corner, so double check it. And again, if you're using those flower head pins, They'll melt to stay away from the stay away from your pins. But um, if you have heat resistant or um, glass head pins, 
you'll be okay. It doesn't mean you're going to like hold the iron on there for any length of time. It's heat resistant. Oh, Jane, thank you. It was only blurry at the end. Well, thank goodness. I'd hate to think you were blurred through that whole that whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm going to pin near those corners again. And your corners now should be curved, and they should be laying nice and flat. And again, if they're not, you've got to stop and fix it. And all that means is you need to get in there and clip. Okay? Sometimes you're not clipping close enough. Um, just if you... All right, so let me see. So if I'm... Say this is my seam. I'm going to put my end of my scissor just before the seam and clip. So I'm not clip, clip, and moving up. I don't want to clip back here because I could take off this whole fabric. I just want to put the point of my scissors just before that stitching. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now we're going to top stitch all the way around. And again, we want to start on this left side because the edge of your foot is on this left side. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So let me switch over and hopefully, hopefully I won't make it blurry. So I'm going to, because I'm going to the left edge, I'm going to go right through. And again, got half my bag and Half my bag in the front, half in the back. And I can go ahead and roll this up. Look, I can roll this up and clip it, too, if I want to. Just be careful if, if you roll it up, you don't make it too heavy that it's hanging there. You want it, you want it to set on something just be, because of the weight of it. Okay, so about an eighth of an inch. And again, I'm not going to, I'm not starting on the curve. And I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going to stitch over. This time I'm only going to stitch over maybe half an inch because it shows. And take your time when you're coming around to the corner. Fast sewing doesn't make good sewing. It just makes fast sewing. And this time, I think I'm going to leave my pins in and take them all out because I, I have them all in the place where they're out of the way. So we'll just take our pins out when we're finished. Oh, I'm trying to keep my hand. And I've got to move my fabric around. Make sure you move all your fabric around as you move around, as the, you go around the um, opening. And I'm making sure that my fabric, see, I'm making sure that my fabric is laying flat. So see how it was up like this? I want to make sure it's flat. So see, up like that. I'm trying to do it with my hands out of your way. There we go. Trying to stand out of your way here as best I can. So, let's put my scissors with me. So, again, I'm going to stop, move my fabric around, make sure it's not hanging off anywhere, keep it neat. That way, you have less chance of sewing in a part that isn't supposed to be there. I went off my eighth of an inch, but that's okay. I'm sewing like a drunken sailor here. Good thing it's not my prom dress.
And so it's standing up and left footed. Oh, coming to the end. And I want to aim for lining up where the stitches I started. And I'm just going to go over them just a little bit. And I'm going to lock in place. If you have a lock in place, use that because it shows less. Okay, so we're back. We're going to take our oh, take our pins out, and I have to feel around for mine because they blend in with the fabric. I would have counted them, but I know I would have forgot how many it was by the time I got done sewing. So, okay, and guess what we're going to do? Press. You see the difference after you press? Someone tell me that you do, just to make me feel better. Oh, see, I'm pressing and you can't see that. Oh, let me do that again. Here we go. Round the loop. So wasn't that fun doing that uh, opening that way? And pulling it through the center? I thought so too. Okay, so now we're going to do our side seams. And um, I have to pin, so I'm going to move, take my pressing mat out of the way. Does anybody have any questions before we go on? That really means I have to stop, take a drink. So we're going to open this up, and we have it right side up. Um, for anyone that's done the hot dog pillowcase, this is sort of the same thing, but not quite. But it's sort of. It'll remind you of it. So we're going to take the whole long side, and I can't get the whole long side in the camera. So I'm going to grab, I'm grabbing each end. And I'm going to roll it like this. i got to grab the other end there. And we're rolling it towards the other long side. And when we get fairly close, like about right here, This, now, the, oh, there. now, this is going to seem really funny because the first time I did it, I thought it was a little odd. But because we're not putting right sides of this together. We're going to take this one that's underneath and push it back, which is really right here, but we don't want it to come undone. So we're just going to go a little ways at a time, and we're going to pin these together. So you see, everything we rolled is inside of here, lining front, right sides together. There's there's no other there's no other edges that you can that you can grab by mistake. That's, that's all there is. But keep your hand here because this this fabric is right here. There's nothing holding it back except the roll. Does that make sense? And as I'm doing it, I'm going to I'm going to push the stuffing down. And you can clip or pin. Apparently, I'm feeling the pins today. And remember, we don't pin at the edge, though we make sure it's lined up. And you want to make sure it's lined up this way and this way. Because if we pin at the edge, we have to take the pin out before we start sewing. So we're just going to pin a little ways down. And see, when I pin... I'm making sure that I didn't get any of that, well, I'm going to call it the hot dog, in there. But if I clip it, I might not push it down enough. And we're just going to slowly 
just keep grabbing that lining fabric and pinning. Don't undo the back too far. You don't want, you don't want the whole thing to you don't want your hot dog to fall out of the bun. And we're just going to keep going along. Just take your time. And I just I'd have to lift it up to get that lining out from underneath. So this technique and the one with the opening, I, I enjoy doing every now and again, so this is a good project to do it on. So before I go too far, I've got about a foot left or so. I'm going to come down to this end and make sure I'm lined up this way and this way. And I am going to pin close to the end here because that's the end of my sewing. And then I just want to make sure that I don't have any big gap here. If I do, I've got to unpin some of these. So what I would do is, so if I had a gap up here, of you know, one fabric being so much bigger than the other, I, I would pin up a ways, and then maybe undo part of it, and then repin it again. You shouldn't have to go all the way back to the beginning. Okay, so we're all pinned. And double check, it's lining on one side, outside fabric on the other, and our hot dog is down inside the bun. Okay, see, it's in there. Okay, so let's go sew. And again, quarter inch seam. So my hot dog thing is kind of heavy, so I'm putting that on the table. If you don't have a table, put it up like that because You've got the whole weight of all that, like a yard of fabric that you don't want to have to um, argue with. So before I start, I'm going to make sure I'm lined up this way and this way. So if I need to repin to line up and then pin out here somewhere, see how I pinned out here, I can do that. Whatever's easier for you. Once you once you get your uh, needle into the fabric and the needle's down, that becomes that third hand for you. So you can you can get everything situated. So I want to make sure that I keep everything flat, and I want to make sure to check that lining fabric that it didn't go too far left. And it's not sticking out and showing. And then we're just going to do a straight thing. And we want to make sure we're not sewing our hot dog in. And you notice I keep stopping because there's no reward. Well, stitching without stopping. It might be punishment because it doesn't come out right. There's no re the, the reward is it comes out nice huh? if you stop. How's that? away from the needle so that I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get in any trouble. And I'm just feeling along here to make sure I'm not going to 
You're sewing this and you're sitting there going, I want to stitch my hot dog in. Someone hears you, they're wondering if you've got a sewing on a real hot dog. When I get near the end, so I'm probably three or four inches from the end, now take my end pin out. I'm going to make sure again that I'm lined up in both directions. And I'm going to be hanging on to this fabric here, but also here. And this hand's going to follow right past so my fab fabric stays nice, nice and straight right through the last stitch. Okay, go back to the work table. So you're thinking, oh, goodness gracious, how am I ever going to get that whole center and the hole in the middle? So I'm just going to reach in, and then I'm just going to, I'm just grabbing some here and pulling it through. And I'm just going to keep pulling it through. And then you get to this part, and you go, holy moly, now I'm in trouble. Now I just keep pulling it through. And then you'll get here. And you'll go, oh, where's the other half of my, where's the other half of my bag? Just keep pulling it through. Looky there. You got a whole bag. And of course, I got excited, so what didn't I do? I didn't have you press before you turned it. See what happens? But we are going to press now, and you know how we press that flat. You know what? We'll wait and do it after because um, we're going to be rolling it up again. So let's not worry about that yet. So make a note in your notes. That don't get excited to turn it right side out. Press first. And I don't have any idea how I'd turn that back inside out again. So here's our sewn in raw edges down here. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Just remember, and we don't have to match this all up. It doesn't matter. We're just going to roll this up again, and I'm rolling the whole thing, the whole, yeah, of both ends. Look, got my hand caught in the pocket. And I'm just going to get so far, so this end is just hanging off my table. But it's rolled up. Okay, so now I'm going to grab, I got the lining this time, right side is up. I'm going to flip the front to the, to the back so that we've got the hot dog going again. I'm going to line up this end. And if you remember from when we did it before, instead of lining it up when we get to the machine, we can go ahead and put that pin in. Remember how I did the pin? Let's put this one in first. Let's go down a ways and put this pin in. Otherwise, the, you're struggling with the fabric, the weight of the fabric. And I'm going to make sure this, this edge and this edge are lined up. And I'm just going to stick that pin here I am. I'm away from the stitching. Not only am I away from the needle, I need to be away from the foot. Because sometimes we forget that. Okay, so here we go again, going down. Matching up the raw edges. I've got right side fabric of both pieces facing each other. This isn't something you'd really want to do on your lap either. I think you'll struggle a little bit. As I as I say, 
your lamp, your lamp is not a table. Which really means is that your legs are not flat like a table, and, and I don't really think you want them to be. So sometimes working with your legs as a table doesn't work out as well as just going to the going to the table and doing it. But don't forget, when you get close down to the other end, I'm almost close enough. You see that? I had pins over here, and that was bothering me. I had to move them over there. Isn't that sad? Okay. So then my there's my pocket. My pocket's trying to come out. So I've got, again, I've got about a, a foot left to go. I'm going to come down to this end. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up this this way and this way. And I can put that pin right in that end. And then I'm just going to look and see when I when I just hold these two taut, I don't have any place that I have extra fabric on one side and not on, on not on the other. And again, if you did, just pin up a ways and then get to the area that you can unpin and get it straightened up. Don't unpin the whole thing. Okay, so nice and flat, right sides together, double check, right sides together. Okay, let's go sew. I'm going to stick this guy up on the table. I don't, I don't, oh, there goes my scissors. Now my head's in your way, I'm sure. Let me put my scissors, let me put my scissors up the top and then you'll have to tell me where I put them. I probably have, I don't know, three inches of table, two inches of table. It's enough. If, but if you don't, stick it up like that. Okay? Your lap could work okay for that if your lap is close enough to, let, to set your fabric on. Okay, so see my pin that I put in to make sure my end was nice and straight is well out of my way. But once I get going, I'm going to take him right out of there because he would be one I would forget. I'm holding here and I'm making sure my two fabrics are together. I'll take that pin out. So when you get ready and you take a pin out, I'm holding my fabric here, but after you take the pin out, just lift up and say, okay, Mr. Other Side, where are you? And as long as it's right there, you're good. Don't, don't think it's there and, and then you find out after you get down the other end, which is about 40 inches later. Um, you don't want to have to undo all that. Well, you can just do this. Either way, just check it. And make sure you, you, your dog is out of the way. When you have your hand right here, you can feel where the bunchiness of the rest of the fabric is. Well, you should be okay. Foot moved away. Pedal moved away. See my other my underneath fabric is 
trying to peek through. Make sure your fabric behind the machine is not pulling down either. So I took that last pin out. So I'm holding this so this is straight here and it's straight here. I'm trying to do it without getting my hands to it. And see how I keep my left hand to staying right on there to the, to the bitter end. Okay. So this time, remember, I'm going to remember to press, aren't I? Okay, so pressing mat. Oh, there we go. Pressing mat. And I don't want to press over and, and I don't want to cook the hot dog. I want to stay right on the, just right on that seat. And let me check to see if anybody has any questions. I don't see any. I gave my iron a minute to heat up. It shuts off on a minute. So all I care about is just doing the seam. So nobody, uh, nobody put in the chat that the seam looks better after it's soft, after it's pressed. Come on now. Okay, so here we go again. We're reaching in, so you're you're not afraid this time. Pulling it through. like magic. Okay. So now we've got to do that little extra press. At least I do. I want to open this up a little bit more. And it's going to be a little harder up by where the... Let me see if I can move that over. Up by where the handle is. You don't have as much... Uh, room. So just try to get your bag laying as, as flat as you can. It just makes it easier. And move this over. And make sure you feel underneath that it's not, there's nothing. Oh, the, I wonder what that was. The pocket's there. And I want to make sure that the seam is going just so it's going in the same direction. And I'm just on the seam, so I'm not over here. And I'm going to work my way up or down, down the, to the other end. And it, you know, it's a little fussy. And I'm just feeling underneath to make sure I'm not ironing in some big creep. And now I'm just using like the nose of my iron. I'm just going to come down to this end. And now, see, I can kind of come up. And if I do put a little crease in it, I can, I, I can get that out. I just try to avoid it if, if possible. And I probably should have uh, turned it over, but I'm and I and ironed it from the side that's going to the outside. But as long as it doesn't have that that big um, 
creeks. So now I'm going to do the other side. And this time I can, I'm working from the right side. And you'd be hopefully working in a little bit bigger area, like an iron and board. That'd be good. I could feel something wrinkly under there. There we go. And then let's see how far up it can get. There we go. Okay, so now let's get it, let's get it pressed. And we just don't want the lining showing to the front side. So if you don't have a lot of space, I so to my right, which is that way, to my right is the end of the table. So rather than iron and go left and bunch it up like that is, I'm going to iron and go right so it can just hang off the table um, and not get all bunched up. Otherwise, my ironing was all for nothing, wasn't it? And don't worry about if your bottom isn't lined up perfect, your two fabrics. We'll trim that later. So I'm just going to pull this down so it still stays nice and neat. I'm running into my sewing machine up. up. Up here, my sewing machine's right there. I don't want the iron in the side of my sewing machine. That wouldn't be good. And I don't have quite room enough to do both sides at the same time. Are you, are you ahead of me on your ironing?
Okay. How are we looking? We got our side seams done. We got our center done. Uh, we're not top stitching because when we sew these sides together, that will be that will be top stitched. So we're going to turn this over to the lining side. Let me just fold mine up a little. I don't want to fold it up too far. All right, so we're going to the lining side, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this outside edge, and I've got a little thread. So this is the edge we just did, our long edge, and we're going to fold it in to meet that part right there. So let me get my mat out because otherwise I'll pin to my mat. Oh, my um, I steamed so much with my mat that it my cutting mat's a little wet. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm folding in. This is our outside edge that we just did, and I'm folding it in to match up with this edge. So the lining is inside. And I'm not pinning in the center because I don't know where the center is yet. So I'm pinning on two sides. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and do this one, folding it in. Pinning upside down. Okay, and we're going to fold the bag in half, so we can kind of do like that is, just bring that edge in. We're going to fold in half. I'm not long enough to turn it yet. Oh yeah, I'm facing in your direction anyway. And we just want to match these. Don't worry about the bottom down here. Don't worry about that. So I'm just going to put a pin there just for a minute. And then I want to make sure I'm going to take my finger here and pull this because I don't want a bunch of, I don't want to have a, um, like a big fold of fabric in there. And all I want to do is, so this is where it folds in half, because this is lined up. I just want to put a pin where the fold is. Okay, can you see my pin right there? I'm going to come over to the other side, do the same thing. And I just put my... I can put my whole hand in if I want to, but I'm just smoothing it out so that I don't have uh, like a fold in the underneath one and it really isn't at the halfway point. And again, I'm going to put a pin in right where that fold is. So I'm not pinning the, I'm not pinning it closed. I'm just putting the pin in. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to stitch across right where that pin is, and that will hold these two together. Okay. 
So you can see how see how that one is. And I went over and back and over. I don't know why really, because it's there's no seam there. So if you just I just go over and back. There's no seam there, so it isn't like we have to struggle with it, but for some reason I felt the need to do that. So I'm gonna just go, I want I'm gonna start at the at the side that where the two fabrics are. And I want to make sure that they line up evenly. And I want to make sure it's flat underneath. And so let's go so. Okay, so we just have to have the, um, the handle without all the rest of the fabric. So we can, we can get there, okay. So we're going to put our foot down, line up where we have the, the pin, and go ahead and put your needle down. And you can leave your pin in just to get started. And we're just going to stitch straight across. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to get the... Went off, I went off the edge. And then I'm just going to turn around. I'm going to take that pin out. Put it that way. And come back the other way. If I know why I did that. I'll show you. So... I can just do it back and up, uh, and I'm always saying this, I don't like to cut threads at the end, for some reason they show more. So if I back up a little ways, maybe like five stitches or so, and then cut, I can easily trim those threads rather than having that thread hanging off the end. Oh, and I'm going to take all the pins out of that side that I had in, plus that pin in the middle, and then I'm going to do the other side. And again, we're starting where the two folds are. That makes it sure that we um, they, that they stay lined up. Now, normally I would reach over and and uh, hand wheel my needle down, but my arm and, my, and me would be in your way. going back about five. And now I'm going to take, make sure I take all my pins out. If I said needle before, I meant, I meant pin. Okay, so back to the table. So I'm just going to double check where all my pins are. Make sure I don't have any wayward pins. Okay, so now we've got our we got our pocket on. Side seams, the the first round of side seams is done. Our opening is done. Our top stitching is done. So if you got to this point and you forgot to do your top stitching, you still have time to do it. And now we've just um, stitched our our hand, uh, what is it, handle in half. Okay, so let me get to my next page. This, this was one I couldn't, I just want to make sure I don't forget something. Okay, so now we're going to do 
Um, trying to remember now. Are we right sides together? Wrong sides together. We are. Shoot. I, I have to stop and remember now. I think we're going to be wrong sides together. Yeah, wrong sides together. We're going to fold our bag in half. And again, make sure that we line this top part up. And let me check and see, because I can't see the screen from here. I'm just going to put a pin here. We're going to open this, we're going to open the sides up. And, and what I mean is they're not folded in anymore like this top, like this top part is. We're going to open them up. And put some pins in. And we want to take our, you can take your ruler, and let me do it this way. Take your ruler, and we just want to measure across because we want to end our stitching there. So we'll put our last pin right there. And I'm going to, I'm going to get, get closer to my heel in it. Here we go. And, and don't worry about this being all jumbly and stuff. It's okay. But I want to put my last pin about even with the, this opening. And I'm going to put, let me see which way my saw. I'm going to put two pins there. Because that reminds me that I have to stop there. And I'm going to come over to the other side. And pin. And I'm going to do the same thing. And if you and if you want to, because I know some of you are fussy about this, so I've lined up. I'm calling it the neck because it reminds me of the neck. I'm lining up my neck with the um, mat. Ow! Stab myself. So that you can get your pins in the right place. I can see mine are a little low. So my first pin went in in line. My second pin will go uh, after that. So it isn't going to matter on this end because we're going to be sewing from this side. So now I got to get I got to get my other pins straight because because they were way off. Hard my hard my reach. And I actually think that you really could, and you'll see after you do your, your first bag, but I think you could almost end um, a little further down. I'm going to take mine just so you can see, and I'm going to go about an inch down and end it because I think that gives you more handle. So I'll do mine as an experiment so you can see. And you can experiment too because all you have to do if it is you know, so a little more seam, but you're not going to know it until, until your bag's all done. So let me try it on mine. And I'll show you what I mean on the bag that is already done. Okay, now I'm going to take that pin out of the center because I know I could get that. Okay, so let's look at this. 
So see how we sew all the way up? So if you're just holding your bags and not like putting your arm through, that's enough room. But I think you'd be fine if you ended an inch earlier because I don't think it has a lot to do with this except, you know, you don't want the food to fall out this part. But So that's why I'm going to do, I'm going an inch back. Can you, can you see that? See how that's, so if you want a little more here, I'd say go an inch down and try that. So I'll give you a minute to get all pinned. And I didn't see any other questions. I had to go across and see if there's any other questions. So we're almost done. So now we're going to sew from the double pins down. And on this side, we're sewing from here up to the double pins. Okay, so I'm going to start with this side, doesn't matter which, and do that seam. And then we only have uh, two seams to go. So let's sew. And this time, I might take just a, t uh, I'll do my regular quarter inch, I guess. I'm going to take a tad more, but I think we're good. What I want to make sure is I don't have any, I want to make sure that everybody's lined up. Trust the pin cushion again. And I mean along the along the sides. I don't want the the bottom side showing past the top side. And I'm coming up to my two pins. And I remember my first pin that's closest to the needle is the one that I'm sewing up to. So I'm just gonna eyeball where that was. And I am going to uh, back stitch this. Or you can turn it around and stitch. And then come forward a little bit more. And then lock it. I'm trying to keep my, my elbow looks like it's giant when it's in the camera. Looks like I got giant elbow. Oh, look, I found a pin. Okay, now the other side was starting from the double pins. So I can take the, the one that's closest to the machine out because I know that's not where I'm starting. And I'm going to, you got to pardon my reach for a second. I want to turn my wheel close to where that pin is before I take it out. If I had just put my needle down, my, my foot probably would go down too, and I, don't, I didn't want it to go down on top of that pin. And if your if you're, um, lining fabric shows a tad, don't worry about it because this isn't really going to show. It's in that crease, that tweak that we've got to make. And you know, it is just a grocery bag. Fancy one, but it's a grocery bag. Right, now I'm looking because I'm concerned that my underneath fabric is on to the left. No, it's good. Okay, back to the drawing board. So we're going to give that a little press. I'm going to get my little my little pressing mat. Let me just check if anybody has any questions. So my my um, my back in a couple of places shows a little bit, but that's okay. You'll see, it'll be fine. Okay. 
Come on. Be cooperative. Okay, double check. Make sure you've got all your pins out. All right, now we're going to take the time to even up the body. And we're just going to take a sliver off. Okay, so ruler goes on, lining up here, lining up here, and just a sliver of whoever's shortest, that's where you're going to go. I've got to move this over a little bit. And don't forget, you got that pocket area, so there's a, you might have to have a little extra gumption going by that pocket. And again, you notice my hand stays on the ruler. Well, I know the I got the go-ahead. So now we're all nice and even down here. So we're going to put a few pins in. And I'm just feeling underneath to make sure I don't have any, um, you know, um, folds in the lining fabric. I'm not going to pin where the pocket is because then I'd have to go through that many more layers. If you want to, you can. I just want to make sure I can feel that it's all nice and flat. Now, when you get to the when you get to the pocket area, it, it, you're going to have to come up that little hump. So if you get there and your machine doesn't want to go up, just lift up your foot and just, you know, scoot it just a, just a tad and then put your foot back down and you might want to hand wheel. Or it depends on the machine you have. But it's not a lot. It just might, it might, you might have a machine that it just doesn't want to get over that little bump. Okay, so let's go sew. You know, when I, I, when I do one of these um, live online, I'm, I'm always worried that I forgot to tell you to do something. And then your whole bag will be, you have to do it over and there'll be a riot. Um, and we can backstitch here if you want to. So three forward, three back. More. Oh, I know what I went right off my fabric. There we go. So we're doing about an eighth, one eighth inch seam here, so half of a quarter inch. Because in essence, we're doing a we're doing a French seam. Okay, so my machine went over the pocket just fine. So far, so good. And I can see that I might be too close to the edge. And I'll know when I when I look inside. Okay, and then you can back stitch at the end. So if I'm not sure, I'm going to come back to the work table. So if I'm not sure, because I was pretty close to that edge, I'm just going to open it up and look in here to make sure that I caught my fabrics the whole way. And if you didn't, you don't need to undo what you did, you just need to stitch in a little further. Okay? But before I turn it, of course you know what we have to do. Got to give it a little press.
And again, if you if you're too close to the edge, you don't want to be hanging on the edge um, because that won't that won't help that won't help um, keep your seam uh, a reinforced seam. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it inside out. And we're going to get our tool. Now this is the part that always makes me wonder if I did it right. I feel like my I feel like my chair is moving on me. So you're going to just get so far, and it's going to be like, ah, oh, something's not right here. And what you have to do is, um, it always take, takes me a minute here. It, ha it did I do that? Did I do that wrong? I did. I knew I was going to do something wrong. Okay, you're going to have to yell at me. I knew when I said that that there was something not right. Because this shouldn't be this shouldn't be flat like this. So, all right. If you're watching this later, sorry. Well, I'm sorry now too. I forgot to fold the edges in. See how our edges are folded in? Darn it. Okay, don't leave me a thumbs down. I just need to get and I and I stitch really close to that edge too. Where am I? I'm in the I'm going I'm going up the side. I don't want to do that. I I I stitch close enough to the edge that I probably could just cut it off, but you have to undo your stitches. I have to undo mine, too. I just need to get it opened up. See, I, I, that must have been my premonition of I knew I was forgetting something. And when you're unstitching and you go too close to the edge, it can be that can be painful, too. Okay, someone chat and yell at me so I feel, I, I can feel that, I, I want to feel your pain. We got so far and then we, and it's, a, and it's the very end, isn't that always the way? Well, I can show you how I unsolve that. That makes you feel any better. So if you put your you get your little ball there. I know some people put the ball to the inside. I can't. But if you run that right along, you see, and and it takes it takes some um, it takes practice. But you should be able to unsew almost as fast as you can sew. I said almost. You just don't want to. Um, you just don't want to tear your your fabric. And again, if I was if I was by myself and doing this, I might, I might uh, just cut it off because I was, I was way under an eighth of an inch. Trust me. See, I should have known by that, shouldn't I have? Okay. I'm gonna give you a minute. To unsew, and then if anybody wants to yell at me, go ahead. I'm, I'm ready. I deserve it. Okay, because we need to press.
I skipped it in reading my instructions. And what we need to do is to see how our see how our handle is folded. We want to have that the whole way down. Make sure my iron's going. So make sure your handle and everything, see how it's all lined up? See how it's all lined up here? And we just want that fold to continue down. I knew when I turned that inside out, it wasn't looking right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pin there. For the moment. Because I want to make sure, make sure your pocket's right side up. Because... Um, you want to have the same distance left and right on your pocket. I feel like I'm way too far in. And what I do is I'm kind of holding this the seam so that it doesn't come back over. Okay, let me just put that pin there. And then I want to do the other side, so I want to make sure that my make sure my handles in. And if you want to put a pin there for a second or a clip, I'm just going to stick a clip there for the moment. And so I'm bringing in one side. And there's my seam, and I need to bring the top one out over that seam. But I want to make sure the back and the front are the same. So there shouldn't be any any pleats here. This is to me this is the hardest part. So I want to make sure see I want to make sure this is all nice and flat. And whatever I need to move, so if I can't, oh, let me do this. So I folded this back, this back part in. I'm going to put my finger right here where that seam is. When I bring this over, the top over, and it doesn't reach the back, it may be that the back is out too far. If I go past, it may be in too far. Because I don't want to, I don't want to tug off of one side, to make the other side work. That makes sense. And the reason I'm using clips right now is it's, they're easier to undo and redo. So I'm going to put a clip up this end. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Stitch happens, doesn't it? Okay, so I can see here's my... Yeah, there's my pocket. I don't want more distance here than I have here. So I had less, which means I just folded way too much. And and I'm not gonna get out a you know the ruler and measure it to be exact. It's a bag. And again, I want to I want to make sure I I feel in here 
just to make sure that I don't have like a big crease in the back. I'm, I'm sure it won't matter. I want to say that's about a, an inch, inch and a half maybe. So what I sometimes do is I just lift this up and try to get the, that fold, everybody happy. So there's different ways to go about it. I'm going to take those top clips out. Because this whole part, this whole pleat is not going to be stitched. So that's why I say it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to kind of have equal distance between these. And I'm pretty close. Close, close enough. And I also want to make sure that, oh, I see I got a, I can feel, I can feel a fold in this side. And again, like I said, none of this is stitched closed. Okay. Did everybody get that okay? While well, I was fumbling around. And I just want to look at the back, make sure. See, I want to make sure that I push this down. Because that lining was, was showing. And now I'll put my pins in. I'm going to leave my clips on for now. I'm going to put my pins in. And this time I am going to pin right across the pocket in case I need to adjust this outside again. Because when I pin in here, I know this is nice and flat. And that's my only concern. I don't have to concern myself really up here. I just do it to make it lay flat. And I just want to move this out, this pleat. So that my distance here, and I'll tell you about what distance I have, in case you're wondering. Looks to be about maybe four inches. Uh, three and three quarters. Oh, see, I got four in one side and three and three, three and three quarters on the other. Let me make sure. Yeah, four, and so I got, I'm going to move this one out just a tad. Yeah, so about four inches from your oh, four inches from your edge to the end of the pocket, just about. Okay, we ready this time? Don't worry about if it's lining up perfect the whole way up. It isn't going to matter because it's folded in. And let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to take this clip out and put a pin in, I'm going to put it over here because I'm going to give this a little press. Just so it kind of flattens out that. Um, that that pleat it makes it a little easier to stitch. Okay, so let's go sew. So this time I'm going to do a better job, and I'm going to take. 
I have a little extra piece of fabric I need to trim off. I'm going to take a little bit more than I did before. So I'm going to take a healthier one eighth. And because I've got this pin over here, I don't have to, I don't have to undo it. I, I take the pin out is what I meant. All right. So let's see. Oh, three forward. I don't know why I'm going so fast. Three back. I am going to take that pin out so I don't forget it. We already heard that story. And I did want to be on the side with my pocket, but I'm on the other side and that's okay. Oh no, I am on the pocket side. stitch. There we go. I'm going to go about five back because you know me and having that stitch at the end and then a couple forward and then cut my thread. Make sure I take that other pin out. Okay. I don't know if the story is with my mouse today. Here we are. Okay, we'll just give that a little press. Put my seam ripper away so we don't have to use that again. Now let me see if anybody has any questions. I'm glad, Rhonda, you're, you're laughing, and I hope everybody else is. But you know, when I do these, in reality, I don't mind making a mistake. I said, I don't mind making a mistake anyway. But these things are going to happen to you, too. And then what do you do? So in this case, you just say, yeah, okay. I just got to take that stitching out. So now we're going to turn it inside out. And now it'll make more sense because, because, <laughs> I don't know how else to say this. Because when you turn this inside out, it doesn't make any sense. And when I turned it inside out before, it made sense, so then I knew something was wrong. Because of this mess down here, you're like, uh-huh, I don't know, I don't know what I did. I did something wrong, but you didn't. Let me just get my little tool and can you see you see how I got this fabric see how I got this line of fabric well that's that pleat and you have to pleat it to get the bag turned inside out correctly Does that make sense and again it doesn't have to be perfect because we only have, we just have to do a, we just have to do another seam here because we got to hide the, the, um, the outside seam. So we're doing a French seam, which is just, it's a seam, it's a seam inside of the seam. I feel like the leg of my chair is loosening up. So we don't have to worry about up here. We're just concerned with right down here. Yeah, can you see that okay? So I'm just going to make sure that that's good. And I'm going to make sure that this one is good. And, I, and really what you have to do is you have to get in there and, and uh, get that. I'm grabbing onto this fabric here to push this corner out.
So it should look like this. Okay, if you have any, okay, so look, you see my little piece of fabric here? Hold on. You see it? I didn't catch my, that fabric in my seam. So I should go back and fix it. But in the interest of getting this done for you, I'm going to fold it in. And I'm looking for my pins. And of course they're over here. But you would just turn that back uh, right side out and fix it. Oh, see? Look. So I'm going to leave mine and fix it after. But what I want you to do is before you stitch this, you want to make sure that you've got, I'm having a, there we go. I want, to, I want to make sure you, you press both sides, <clears throat> excuse me, press both sides, and then you're going to stitch across. So when you stitch across here, you're going through a lot. So I would stitch across out to about, oh, I don't know, a, a little past this edge. Stitch across, well, no, no, it might be easier. Stay up on, stay up on this, um, on this pleat. So stitch, and then stitch back, and then stitch. And then just stitch across, and all you want to make sure that you do is, you, can you see how I can feel that seam in there, right there? I want to make sure that when I stitch across here, that I'm encasing that seam so it doesn't show in the front. So when I turn it back over to the front, let me go ahead and do it because I can always undo this. So let me go ahead and do mine. Because I can, I can fix this after. So I'm giving that a little steam because I'm trying to just kind of crush that down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the machine. And I don't know why I missed that. Probably too much fussing around with it. So we're going to go over and we're going to stitch across and we're going to do a quarter inch seam and that should cover that um, seam in the front. And you'll see. Let's, let's go to the machine and sew. And this is our last seam. So let me, let me zoom in. Now, I'll, I'll give you a little extra. Let me make sure that, okay, so it doesn't go blurry on you. Okay. If you have a foot that has the black button on the side, so it's a J foot on the baby lock, um, the A foot on the genome, but there's a little black button right here. And it can, it can push it in. So when you're start to sew, and your foot is like this, it doesn't work out well. You want your foot like this. So we got a lot of fabric here. So if I put my foot down and my foot is on the angle, it might have a harder time starting. So what I want to do is I want to push that button in. If it, if it doesn't push in, just touch the foot to make sure it's straight as you're pushing in on that button. Now, now it takes a little little extra dexterity here. So I want to get in line of where my seam is going to be. And I don't mind starting a little in because I can always go back. So I'm holding that button in. And you can put down your lever or you can hit your button for your uh, foot down while you're holding it. And that foot's going to stay straight. Even though it's, even though back here, there's no fabric, and you got a big bunch of fabric. How do I do this? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it because I'm looking at the screen. Um, so your foot will now be even, even though it's halfway hanging off the fabric. Okay? 
and it'll it'll straighten the, the, the button will pop out when it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch forward. And did you watch and see your little button pop out? Kind of fun. Okay, and I'm going to stitch back, or I can turn and stitch. Okay, and I'm going to stitch forward. So I'm keep here's my pleat right here. I'm working my way towards my pleat. And sometimes you don't need it, but I'm gonna get as close to the pleat without stitching on the pleat as I can. Okay, so if I put my foot down, it's doing this again. Right? So what I want to do is I'm gonna lift my foot up, and you can do it, you know, manually. Again, I'm going to push in that button, and if it doesn't push in, I just need to touch the front of the foot, usually down, and that just makes it even. And then I'm going to put my foot down, and again, you can do it manually. And, oh, and I hit my pedal to cut my thread. That's good. That wasn't the best idea. There we go. So I need to do a locking stitch because I cut my thread. And I gotta lock my my um, button again. There we go. So let me know if that worked for you. And and you don't have to have an expensive machine to have that foot. That J foot is on every baby lock machine there is, every brother machine. Janome has the same one. It's an A foot. I, I can't speak for um, Bernina and, and Faf. Well, that was a little extra treat, so you didn't have so to make up for you um, having to unsew. So let's give that a little press. And let's turn our bag right side out. I know we've been at it a while, haven't we? And we're going to find our corners. Oh, find our corners. And don't forget, you've got that, you've got that pleat now that's sewn into the bottom of your bag. So your corner isn't going to come out um, like you think it is. You just want to make sure that that everything is all set. So let me move all this out of the way because we got to give this bottom a bit of a press. And see how I have to fix mine because see, oh, can you see? See that? So if you have that showing, that's because you didn't take enough seam. So you just go back in and do it again. But I don't want to do mine again because I have to. I have to fix it anyway. So you're just gonna. Um, so I just do this. I kind of snap that, and then I take the other side and. Kind of snap that, you know, and I'm just pulling on the top of the handle. And there's your bag. And there's your pocket. How's that? We made it. We made it. Hooray. And again, I'm sorry about the the error. Now let's look at this. Remember, I, I so I took mine back an inch less. So I was an inch below the neckline, I call it. And it gives me a little more room in the bag. And it doesn't really interfere with the inside of the bag. And you got lot, lots of room in there. 
So I'm not going to press mine because I have to fix it. But what you're going to do is just see how I grabbed each end. Oops, see, I get this end and I get this end and I just kind of pull away from each other. And it automatically does that pleat. And you just give it a press. And then the other side, see if I can get in the whole camera here. I'm not, here I am. And I just watch. Just by, just by my finger here, finger there, and I just pull them away from each other and give that a press. I'm going to fix mine um, because, because it looks bad. And um, we're all set. So let me just stop for a minute, see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, Rhonda was saying she didn't know what that button was for. I can tell you, most people don't. And they buy that, um, what is it called, the jig or something like that? But when you're doing, when you're working with jeans, the seams get so thick. And it's like a little ramp that you put in front of your foot and back of your foot or whatever. Well, if you have that button, which, like I said, most machines do. Every baby lock does. Every brother does, as far as I know. Every genome does. I mean, right down to the, I'm not sure, maybe even the $99 machine. If it's a J foot or an A foot, it should have that little button. Okay, so thank you for everybody. And thank you to everybody for joining in. Make sure you hit subscribe. Even though I made you do a seam over, you, you, you don't have to give me a thumbs down. I'm okay with that. You know, if you're not inclined to give me a thumbs up, okay. <laughs> but I, I, I am, I, I do apologize. I knew when I said that, that there was something in my brain telling me that I was missing something. So I hope you enjoy this bag. Um, I think next week maybe I'll find another bag or do another bag that's, easier and not lined so if you need some you know um, some quick ones that you don't want to put as much work into I like this bag because it's extra pretty um, and, and I like the way the the, the shoulders are uh, the handles are folded over because it's nicer on your hands so like I said thanks again and um, some of you I'll see Thursday night at 7 that, that join in on Thursday night otherwise I'll see you next Saturday, I, uh, I'm not sure, but I think next Saturday is my um, work day that I, that I do a class, so we'll be 1.30, uh, but I'll double check and put it on my, uh, on Miss Lorraine Schoolhouse Facebook page, <coughs> excuse me, Facebook page, so you'll know. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon. <laughs>